Solving radical equations. We have three radical equations here and let us see how to solve them. Well, first step in solving radical equation is to isolate radical. Now we have the first one as 3 square root of x equals to 15. What we can do is divide both sides by 3 and then what we get is square root of x equals to 15 divided by 3 that is square root of x is equals to 5. Now to get the value of x we should square both sides. So let's square both sides that will give us x is equals to 5 square which is 25. Now that gives us 25 as our answer. So x equals to 25 is the answer. It is a good practice to check so let us check our answer, right? So let's perform the check and that is when you do 3 times square root of 25, what do you get? We have 3 times square root of 25, we get 3 times 5, which is indeed 15. So that is correct. So that is the right solution, right? Now let us do the next one. I hope you have understood the process, so I'd like you to pause the video, solve the question and then check with my solution, right? So we've done the first one and now let's do the second one. Second one, let's isolate x. So what we will do is multiply by 2 both sides. So we get square root of x as equals to 3 times 2, which is 6. And now we can square both sides. Squaring both sides will give us x as 6 square, that is 36. There's a good practice always in radical equations, check your answer. So let's check this answer. So if you want to check it, you will substitute the value on the left side of the equation. So half times square root of 36, which is half times 6, and that is indeed equals to 3. So it works. So that is the correct answer, right? So x equals to 36 is our solution. So we can write down here answer as x equals to 36. And the previous case, the answer is x equals to 25. Now the last one for us is 2 times square root of x equals to minus 4. Now if you follow the same process, you will definitely get a solution. Now remember one thing, that square root is always positive, it's never negative. So think about it. Let's go with the solution first. So let's isolate. What do we get? We get square root of x equals to minus 4 over 2, that is minus 2. Now square root can never be negative. So there is a problem here, right? You know, square root is always positive. Look for this graph. If you want to sketch square root function, you will always get positive values, right? Never negative, correct? So, there is no solution. So that means no solution, right? Since square root of x is always greater than or equal to 0, never negative. But if you follow, if, if, so if you follow square, what happens? Let us check that part. If you square, then you get x equals to minus 2 square, which is 4, right? Now, you get x equals to 4. Let us check this answer. Now, if you check it, what do you get? You'll get 2 square root of 4, which is 2 times 2, which is actually 4, right? Which is not equal to minus 4, right? And therefore, we say no solution, right? So that is how you can also do and figure out that it indeed does not have any solution, right? But that brings us to a very important part of solving radical equations and that is we always have to check for all the roots, right? So whenever you are doing radical roots, you can expect extraneous root, right? So check for that is that is kind of critical 
whenever you are solving radical equations. So remember that part, right? So let's review what we did. So whenever you are solving radical equations, first step is isolate the radical, the square root function, right? Then you square it. So first is to isolate, right? And second, square both sides. And third process is indeed check for extraneous roots. So these are the three steps which you should be following all the time to check for or solving your radical equations. I hope this concept is absolutely clear to you. Thank you.